Now then YouTube, I'm the Toffman, and welcome back to part two of my Britannia Spotlight. Uh, Britannia was obviously made by Vazki, and this is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check out part one on the Hegyoki Chilled channel. This is a video that's going to be pretty much based around enchanting and mana lenses, so all the rest of the bits and bobs that you need, there are going to be a few other bits and bobs as well that I would like to show you, and uh, that are relevant in this video, that I will also like to bring in but we'll get to that when we, well, no, obviously we get to that. So, without further ado, let's get on with uh, part two of Britannia. Don't forget that Britannia has gone for no GUIs. You like, what, normal machines and stuff like that with. There's no GUIs involved or visualization of anything. There is no numbers involved as well with Britannia. It's just simply amounts, if you know what I mean. Like this, if I was to go over to here and uh, right click on there, you see there's a little bar on there. There's no numbers involved there, it's just simply bars. And uh, there's no pipes, no wires, there's literally two particle effects and uh, as you can see, some of them are over here, uh, they've been done to great, great effect within Britannia. And it's certainly a, a different feel of any other mod that, uh, that I'm used to playing. So, Let's get on with how to build the Enchanter. And we've got to start with some Obsidian, guys. <clears throat> Pretty basic. Obsidian. We need a line of five. Intersect this to make a little cross on either side, with two on either side there. And literally put ones just on the edges of those as well, to make what's this little circle thing uh, right here. Now, if we go into our book, the Lexica Britannia book, um, there is a little guide that you can follow right here, guys. So you need uh, floating one block in the air, as you can see just in the distance there, I've got them uh, sitting above some flowers. You need those flowers there, by the way, guys. Uh, I'll show you that in just a second. But it shows you where to place them. There's these little, little yellow blocks here. So if, uh, like what I did, I counted one, two, and then one, two, up, and then there it is. So why don't I get them uh, sorted for you? I'll be back in a second. Okay, guys, I've managed to get that done. As you can see, I've got them floating one block in the air here. Now, it's also important to know how to craft those mana pylons, and you can find that right here in the natural apparatus. You've got the mana pylons here. It gives you a brief description of what they do, and also how to craft them. Two golden ingots, mana diamond, and two mana steel ingots, and I'll get you only one. You need six of those, by the way, guys, uh, to be able to do that. Now, make sure you uh, place, or already have, some dirt underneath it, uh, these mana pylons because you're gonna need to place flowers underneath these not only there as well guys But right in the center of this circle also you're gonna want a uh, any type of flower now I'm gonna go ahead and get some mystical yellow flowers. Why not? And I'm gonna pop them right in these gaps Around and underneath these mana pylons like that now the final piece in the jigsaw is a lapis lazuli block right in the middle and last but no means least, guys, give it a whack with the Wand of the Forest. And there you go. As long as it's created that little block right in front of you that you can see there, uh, it's worked. You have it. it it's, it's done now, guys. What I would suggest people do is put a mana, pa uh, mana pool right next to uh, this. And I'm just going to use a mana tablet. I'll get into, uh, uh, you know, show you what exactly a mana tablet does in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and fill up that mana pool of mana. Because this is how you're going to enchant items. Now, unlike other enchanters, this works slightly different. And I want to, I really want to show you guys because I love the way that this enchants. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that now because we don't need it. It's a creative mana tablet, by the way, guys. I'll get into uh, that further on in the video. Now, say, for example, I want to go ahead and uh, enchant myself a sword. I simply get the sword, I put it in here, using right click, and you can see it floats above the block right there. Now, I'm going to need to actually go into normal creative mode here. What you're going to need, guys, is the enchantment book of the particular enchantment you want on that item. So say, for example, I've got a sword right in front of me here. If I wanted, ooh, what can I put on a sword? Sharpness. If I had sharpness 3, say for example, oh, I've got one there. If I had sharpness 3, what I do, guys, is I simply chuck this into the middle of the circle. I get my Wand of the Forest, and to start the process, I right-click on this block right here. And you can see it makes this little runic effect on the side there. And it's what it does is it drags the mana from the mana pool. Let's, let's go and grab that book back. You keep your book, by the way, guys. Um, so 
So in slow motion, basically, guys, let me go through this from the start. What happens is you chuck this book into the circle. You right click the block, the enchantment block here, with the sword uh, above it. And what it will do is it will read inside the circle any uh, enchantment blocks that you've got on there. So you can have one or two, three enchantments, and it, you know you could be able to put that onto your sword. Um, and what what will, what will happen is it will read that, and then you will get the little rune effects that you saw on there. And then once that is done, and you know that's when it's safe to pick up your book again. You can pick up your book once those little circles, uh, that circle has come up. Um, it will look around for a source of mana. Now you can do this one of a few ways. You can use a mana blaster, which is this right here, and I'll get to that in just a second. Or how how to craft that, uh, and simply fire. Oops, and simply fire mana at it. You've got to be near a, a mana pool. And there we are. And basically fire mana at the block. Or you can use, obviously, the mana spreader and fire it into there. But the, the best way and most efficient way is to have a mana pool very, very near this one. I think it's about between five and six blocks of this particular block here. And it will take the mana directly from the mana pool and just use it that way. And then what will happen is, once it's got enough mana, you will see the little runic circle close in on itself and go to the top of this here and uh, you know what let's go ahead and give you that that little demo once again that into there that on there it will go ahead runes there you can pick your book up now it will use the mana and then there you go once that little noise comes up it's done you have successfully enchanted an item and I love the way that this enchants, guys. I think that this this way of enchanting just looks fantastic. And, uh, you know, Vasky always aims to please when it comes to visuals. It's much like Azanar, which is why I love, uh, you know, Vasky's mods and uh, both Azanar's mods as well. So that's a little uh, introduction onto uh, how to use the uh, enchantment. So, uh, furthering on uh, what we... Blah, going forward with this, I can now show you how to craft yourself some of the other stuff. Mystical Instruments, for example, this Mana Blaster, um, like I've just shown you, if you're stood next to a Mana Pool and you want it to go a particular way without using a Mana Spreader, just stand near it, use your Mana Blaster. Say, for example, I want it in that Mana Pool over there, I can shoot it right over there. And that's what basically what a Mana Blaster can do. And uh, how, you do, how you craft that, guys, is this. Mana Spreader, Living Wood, TNT, Mana, uh, mana diamond, and a rune of mana. It's not exactly cheap, but it certainly is very, very useful if you don't like fiddling around with mana spreaders too much. And that's the, uh, the the mana blaster there. Moving on, guys, I want to get to the next thing, which is the uh, as you can see the mana tablet, which is just floating around over there. That's a creative version, though. And uh, it's under portable mana transport in mana manipulation. And whilst using spreaders to transport mana around is all well and good, there is a way of doing it in a different manner. The mana tablet is a portable object which can carry mana on itself. And uh, you can craft it with uh, living rock around a mana diamond or a mana pearl, guys, and that will get you the mana tablet. Now, what I'm using is a, the creative version, which uh, is obviously cheating. Let me go ahead and get a, just a normal one. This is just a normal mana tablet. Now, what you can do, guys, is by default, if you look at this, you can see it's accepting power from items. Both of these are accepting power from items. If you shift and right-click with your Wand of the Forest, it's now sparing power to items. And uh, if I put the Mana Tablet on top of here, it's going to do absolutely nothing. Nothing at all, because it's accepting power from the items that are placed near it, in which case this mana tablet. It's got nothing in it, so it's not going to give it any power. If I change this to sparing power and chuck this on top of it there, you'll get this little effect going up towards the mana tablet, and uh, what that basically is doing is charging up this mana tablet using the mana pool underneath it. And as you can see there, it's doing a very good job of it as well. Let's go and grab that. It's now full. That is exactly what you can do with a mana tablet. Now, all we're, uh, also guys, as you can see, this one is accepting power from items. Just chuck it on top of there. Oops. Chuck it on top of there. And it will drain all of the power from that into the mana pool. Basic stuff, guys. Real basic stuff. The mana tablet. Now we're going to take a look, guys, at 
mana lenses. These can do a variety of different things and will help you distinguish what exactly is doing what in the system that you're using. If you've got a lot of these firing mana everywhere that are all the same colour, you could possibly wonder, uh, hang on a minute, where's that Where's that laser beam going? Where's that beam going? Where's that mana going? Where's that mana going? Because they're all the same colour, they're all the same uh, thing. Now, one thing to note as well, guys, this little blob here is obviously, you can see, it starts to run out of mana when it gets to this spot right here. It starts to lose it and peter out as it goes along. So, right guys, we're going to get on with uh, mana lenses. And there's a lot of them. There is a lot of them right the way down, as you can see here. So, let's have a look at them. Looking in the information for the mana spreader, uh, around about seven pages in, you will find a bit that says lenses can be dyed all 16 colours of the spectrum or combined with a mana pearl to create rainbow lenses. Uh, these will change the colour of the burst. Now, basically what mana lenses can do is upgrade the potential of uh, of the mana spreader itself. So we're going to show. I'm going to show you that just now, guys, and I'm going to go into into detail on what some of these can actually do. The next page here will show you how to craft a mana lens with uh, mana steel ingots and, of course, a glass pane in the middle. That's the basic lens. It doesn't do absolutely anything, but you can combine it in a crafting table with any type of dye to get the mana lens tinted in that particular colour. And then right on the end here, you can combine it with a mana pearl and it will get the rainbow tinted lens. Let's go and play around with some of these lenses then, guys. Uh, let's just get normal lenses and a crafting table. That would also help. And let's get a die. So say for example, I'm going to go for uh, purple die. Why not? Mana lens in the crafting table with purple dye will get you a purple tinted mana lens. Now take a good look at this guys, you'll see that every single burst of mana is green in colour. Let's go over to this mana spreader here, right click on it, and now it's placed a lens on the front of this mana spreader. Let's take a look. It's now purple in colour, and that's basically what these do guys. It will go ahead and it will get yourself just a different coloured uh, lens, so just a different coloured uh, mana burst, so that's that there. It really doesn't do much by itself. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the mana spreader, so that I can show you. Um, and that will just basically change the colour of it. However, there are lenses out there that will do different things. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these lenses. We've got the mana lens for a bar. The bar lens charges the mana burst with the ability to break blocks, uh, break any blocks it comes into contact with, draining its own mana to do so. Let's go ahead and get that mana lens. Where are you? You're around here somewhere. There it is. So I'm going to put the bar lens on here. Now as you can see, it's still green in colour, but don't worry, I will show you something very, very soon. And uh, I'm going to go and grab myself a cobble and just place it right there. My bad, my bad guys. What I need to do is get a cobble. I can place it right there. It's not going to do anything because it's the mana burst itself that destroys the cobble or whatever kind of block that is placed there in its path. And uh, what basically that means is it needs somewhere for that mana to actually send it to. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put a mana pool down here so you can see there's the mana burst. Did you see the, the? This is the mana burst right here, and it needs that to be able to come into contact with the cobble for the uh, for the lens bar to actually work there. And the recipe for the mana lens bar, guys, is just a normal mana lens in a crafting table with a rune of greed, and that will get you the mana lens bar. Now, let's go back and have a look, see what else there is. This is a mana lens for bounce. It uh, will allow the mana burst to bounce off walls rather than dissipating on a collision. In other words, guys, uh, if I was to put one there and a cobblestone was right here, instead of it hitting the cobblestone and then just going all over the place, what it would do is it would bounce back off that uh, that cobblestone back straight back into the lens there um, and you can go ahead and craft that with a rune of summer with a, with a mana lens. The mana lens of damaging charges the mana burst with the power to damage all, any living beings it come across is, uh, comes, comes across draining its own mana to do so. 
don't forget guys that these it's it's the mana burst itself and this is what gets confusing and it does confuse me sometimes what you're looking at here is just the guide the mana burst doesn't actually come until you give it somewhere to go there's the mana burst so something to think about there guys and something to remember certainly when it comes to uh, messing around with these uh, with these lenses so we've got that, that's the uh, mana lens damage, and we've got efficiency, and we've got, you know, many other ones, we've got entropic, we've got gravity, we've got magnetizing, phantom, potency, resistance, velocity, a whole lot of different ones, guys, that will, of course, uh, it drastically increase the speed at which a mana burst travels. Um, magnetizing, as its name state, allow the mana burst to magnetize or home in on nearby blocks that it receives mana. Uh, that can receive mana. Doing so slightly increases the speed of the burst. That's the mana, uh, the magnetizing. Let's go and try that out, shall we? And this is totally on the fly stuff here, guys. Um, magnetizing. Let's go and pop you onto there. Now, don't forget, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put that there. So, what will happen is, when this happens, the mana burst will come. And it's dissipating. Mm. Is that actually going into there? Or does it realize it's there? Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to go ahead and... I don't know if I'll be able to do this, because... Yeah. Let's see if I can... Right, you go out of the way a second. <laughs> there it is. Right. Look at that, guys. And it's it finds the fact that there is a mana pool here and bends itself and actually speeds up the process in which it goes into the mana pool right there. I think that's fantastic, guys. I think that's great. And that's just uh, that's just an example of the magnetizing one right there. Now, also, let's go back uh, even further here. The composite mana lens. Now, if you guys thought that one mana lens was good, well, the composite mana lens... Is, is brilliant. Having a single mana lens in a spreader just isn't enough sometimes. By combining two lenses with a slime ball and a crafting table, it's possible to unite them into one and keep the effects of both. The first lens used determines the visuals, texture and colour. It it's to note that some combinations will not work and that two lenses of the same type cannot be stacked. So let's, let's try this out guys. What I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and get myself a slime ball. So I've got the purple tinted lens here, and I've got the, uh, the you know what, we'll go and grab this. We'll go and we'll grab, ooh, I've just gone ahead and got rid of it. What a clown. Let's go and grab another one. Magnetizing. There we are. Let's combine these. Purple tinted. With the mana lens. Huh. Whoops. Give me one second, guys. Okay, the reason why that wouldn't work, guys, was because you cannot have an empty lens combined with a lens that has a function. So what you would have to do is get a mana lens with, I don't know, say, potency. This might not work at all, guys, so uh, bear with me. Um, I'm one with magnetizing. We'll go ahead and get a slime ball. Now, it's worth saying, guys, that uh, you can go ahead and dye these. Remember, it takes the appearance of the first one that's placed, slime ball, and the, magne uh, the magnetizing one in there. So it will take the purple tinted appearance of the potency, yet keep both of the functions. So it would have a potency magnetizing. I have no idea if this is a good one or not. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, have a look. The potency will double the amount of mana a mana burst can carry. However, the beam becomes slower, and after it starts to lose mana, it does so a lot faster. So... Okay, let's go ahead and put that onto there. And see... Oh, there's no mana pool here. There we are. That's going ahead. I'm going straight into the mana pool over here. So, there we are. That is a, a, a quick look at uh, composite lenses. So, there is plenty of composite uh, lenses that you can obviously make, guys. You can go ahead and, and you know, put these... Oh, whoops. You can go ahead and put these mana lenses together in any which may, way, shape or form that you would like to put them together. Some work, some d won't allow you to do that, some won't work, which is quite obvious, some of them, you, you know, when you pair them together. Um, so that's a, just a basic look, guys, at mana manipulation, at the mana lenses, just in general.
And I think that pretty much covers all of Batania. There are a couple of things that I haven't mentioned, like the spreader turntable, for example, and so on and so forth. There are a couple of things that I haven't mentioned in, in here. There are some more decorative ones as well, guys, that have been added in one of the latest updates. So uh, go ahead and check those out. Ooh, Glimmering Living Wood. That is nice. I like the look of that. Let's go and grab, a, grab one of them. But I really do hope, guys, that you will go out and pick up this mod, because it's certainly very, very interesting indeed. Oh, I like that. Let's get it to night time. Oh, that is nice. I like that, guys. So, Batania for 1.6.4. I do believe that currently it is in, uh, in um, development for 1.7 as well, uh, but don't hold me to that. Uh, but there you are guys any questions any at all do not hesitate to put them in the uh, the uh, the comment section I will do my best to be able to answer them if I can't answer them I will find somebody who can usually probably Vasky actually I'll go ahead and ask Vasky uh, And maybe he will pop along to the video as well and give her his thoughts on it I'm sure that there are some things that maybe could be done in a better way that I'm sure that uh, you know people are familiar with this mod more than what I am and also Vasky himself may be able to say actually that's not strictly true or you know you can do do it this way and it's better and so on and so forth but there we are guys Batania in two parts I hope that you enjoy this mod go ahead and check it out links in the description to that and uh, until next time I've been the tough man thanks very much for watching and as always stay safe